We're off. Right, evening everyone. It is Wednesday, 21st of December. Very, very close to Christmas. Very, very close to me having a few days off work, which will be nice. I've just had a couple of days off work. Moana was fantastic. Really, really good Disney movie. Um, so, um, I'm going to do three tonight because I need to get a little bit ahead of myself just so that over the Christmas weekend, sort of Christmas Day, Boxing Day, Bank Holiday, I've got some already in the bank just so that I'm not tearing myself away from the family and everything that's going on because we're at parents and in-laws and all sorts of stuff going on. So it's going to be a pretty hectic few days. So I'm going to try and get a little bit ahead of myself just so that I can pre-upload, have basically a couple of days off with the family, lots of fun, and then we can get back into this final run because we're so close. And um, some good things have happened today. Um, if you are coming to the uh, event in York on the 21st of January, you will be joining me um, with my final three jams. So you, you will have Brook Laddie Classic, Lafroy 10, and Odd Big 10 year old with me. Thank you very, very much to Christy at Brickladdy for arranging that. Um, just unbelievable customer service from Christy at Brickladdy. Um, amazing stuff. Ardbeg were a bit grumpy. Lefroig never even got back to me. But um, Christy has been absolutely amazing um, and has actually gone to the other two distilleries. And <clears throat> I've had to pay for them, but um, I didn't have to pay as much as I would have done if I'd have gone to a supermarket. So yes, Christy, if you're watching, probably not, but if you are, thank you so much. It's just amazing customer service and Brooklady, fantastic stuff. So a uh, couple more French and then we're gonna do a Spanish. Mm. Um, not sure I feel about this. So um, <clears throat> this particular one is French. Um, it's another donation from Barry Bradford of the Whiskey Files. Thank you very much, Braddy. Braddy? Braddy. I couldn't be bothered to say your whole name, so I just thought I'd mash the, your first name and surname together. Um, so Braddy, thanks very much for this. Um, so this is called Edu. Um, now as an Arsenal fan, um, Edu to me was a Brazilian midfielder that we had that didn't play as often as he probably should have done, but was a very, very good player when he did. Um, however, this is EDDU. Um, and the distillery, it's another distillery in Brittany. The distillery is actually here um, in a village stroke town, town called Promela. And um, it's, it's a company that's called Distillery de Menier, um, which was set up, um, it, it was kind of set up, it was actually a family business, um, but there was a, the, the main guy was a guy called Guy Delay, um, sorry, Guy Lelay, not Guy Delay, Guy Lelay, um, who um, in 1986, it was sort of like a, 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 it wasn't really massively operational, it was kind of like a family, almost hobby more than anything else. And then in 1986, he set up the, um, the company as a kind of full on, right, let's do this. Um, and they did um, something called, is it Lambig? Lambig, which is basically like a, a localized cider brandy, but they did ciders and other brandies as well. Um, but in 1988, Yes, 19, not 1998, um, so 12 years later, um, he then decided he wanted to get into whiskey production as well. Now, um, it's not made from barley. Um, Brittany is quite well known for, um, a, a, a basically it's buckwheat, um, also known as black wheat, um, where it's a form of wheat that is not necessarily native to Brittany, but is quite prevalent there. So this isn't a barley whiskey, this isn't a single malt whiskey, this is a buckwheat whiskey. Um, it's 100% buckwheat, so it's quite unusual. Um, they distill it in a normal process, um, double distillation. Um, they're using uh, French oak casks, um, and it's launched as a no age statement. So this is what the bottle looks like. Um, Master and Malt are actually selling this at 41 quid, um, and they release it at 40%. Now, Edu, E-D-D-U, is actually Breton, as in the Breton dialect language, for buckwheat. That's what they call buckwheat. So um, that's where the name comes from. So this is Edu Silver, which is, is essentially their, their standard version, but it looks as though there's a couple of other sort of releases of Edu as well. So this sounds as though it's gonna be, when I can get into the thing, oh, Jesus. There we go. Really, this could be unusual. This could be really weird. Um, and if it wasn't for me doing this challenge and the generosity of people like Barry, I wouldn't have even known this would exist for the rest of my life, let alone have some in my hands to be able to try it. So 
I'm very, very intrigued to see what this is like. The three whiskies that I'm going to do tonight, all of them really do sound quite unusual. They could be awful, but so far, French whiskey has actually been pretty bloody good. So I'm hoping that this and the next one, Christ, look at the colour on that. Now, I would assume no colouring's been added to that. Um, but that is pretty, pretty dark. That really is kind of a... It looks to me like colouring's been added, but I'm guessing it probably hasn't. I'd be surprised if it had. Although there is a kind of edge to it, which is almost like colouring has been added, but I'd be surprised if they, I'd be surprised and a bit disappointed, to be honest, if they, if they did add colouring. It's entirely possible, you know, it's a, a relative, it's not quite craft distillery, but it's a relatively small distillery that is releasing a whiskey for what is a pretty big market in France. As I've mentioned a couple of times before, France, um, France is the, the biggest consumer of whiskey per head. So it's very, very popular. So it's entirely possible that they're adding colouring to make it look more like whiskey because it would be a lot lighter if not. And then there is a little something on the nose that kind of suggests that maybe colouring has been added. But we'll go, give it the benefit of the doubt. Now, this is buckwheat. This isn't barley. So I don't really know what to expect because I can't even think if I've had anything with buckwheat in it before. My guess would be that it's it's black wheat it's also known as so i'm guessing it's probably going to be slightly more intense in terms of i mean it's it, it's got it's got a sharpness to it it's not quite metallic it's not quite quite that metallic -y, coppery edge that you get with grain but it's not it's not too dissimilar to rye there's a slight spiciness to it but there's a there's something else in there. There's a. It's not quite musty, but there's there's something slightly vegetal, but very very distant, very very subtle. There's there's an edge. There's a. There there is a kind of grain hay feel to it, but there's also a. Pencil shavings. There's there's all sorts of stuff going on, but it's quite a hard hard nose is probably the the wrong. There's not really much softness to it. The, the, there is a lot going on but it's quite sharp and hard and and um, there's an intensity to it. There's not really sweet or anything going on. Much softer on the palate than I was expecting. Although, all of a sudden, this needle of... What is that? There's, there's a real needle of something. Not It's not sour. It starts off quite soft, with not a lot to it. There's not a great deal on the palate, but it's quite fruity. And there is a slight apple which may be kind of, a, you know, me re reading into they were making cider brandy and things like that. But there is a, the kind of, when you get, when you have Calvados, if you've ever had Calvados before, there is an apple to it. And there is a slight tinge of apple to this as well, but it's more like a, a slightly sharper apple, like a Granny Smith, rather than the softer, uh, you know, Royal Gala or Golden Delicious or something like that. There is a sharp, sour appleness, but it's, it's subtle again. The palette, to be honest, is a little bit flimsy. There's something missing. There's, there's something, it, it, everything's in the center of your mouth. So it goes in your mouth, it doesn't flow out, it doesn't hit your cheeks, it just kind of goes straight down the middle of your mouth and then down your throat. It doesn't feel like it's got much weight to it. It's quite soft, it does remind me of Calvados, but it reminds me of a quite weak Calvados almost. It, it's almost like it needs to be a slightly higher percentage, like a 43 or a 46, just to give it something, some oomph, some thing like that. It's eminently drinkable. It's ve it, it is very, very drinkable. It's just a, a little bit lacking in depth and character, but it's still interesting. What is there is slightly, slightly interesting. And I think it's that buckwheat character. There is a, there is a sweetness to it, but there is this kind of, there is a graininess to it that's not grain, that's not like a grain whiskey, or even like a rye whiskey. It's not got the harshness of the rye whiskey. It's not got the spiciness of a rye whiskey, but it's got that kind of brown bread character to it as well. But it's, it's not like a sourdough bread. It's like brown bread. 
with a touch of apple, almost like you've spread a very thin layer of apple sauce on top of a slice of quite rich brown bread, but not brown bread that's heavy on rye and with seeds in and things like that. Just a bog standard brown bread that's quite dark. Sliver of apple sauce, just a, like a very, very thin, almost just a gentle smear with a knife, barely anything on it. So you get the slightest hint of apple with this brown breadiness and a very slight sweetness. But like I say, on the palate, it's just a little bit, it just lacks um, richness and it, it lacks a mouthfeel almost. But it's very, very interesting. And it does have that tang, it does have that edge that suggests to me that they have added colouring to it. But it kind of works with the flavour profile that's there. You know, it's not a kind of, hey, look, they've added loads of colouring. It sort of works. It's not particularly obvious, but it does. I'm picking that edge up. Interesting. Unusual. Worth checking out. Is it worth 40 quid? I think for the... I think for the just the sheer unusualness of it, um, that you know the scarcity of it, the fact that it's it's you know it's buckwheat whiskey that sort of thing. Uh, the bottle, to, to be honest, I don't think the bottle looks fantastic. I think if they premiumized it a bit, they'd actually probably do a bit of a better job. I think they could get away with changing the bottle, making it more fancy, making it stand out by the fact that we we are a buckwheat whiskey. I think they're the only one on the market, um, and therefore. This is very different and very unusual. And you, you could actually premiumize this, put it at 50, 60 quid with a fancy bottle on, and there is the softness and sweetness on that, that people that, and I'm being a bit judgmental here, but there are whiskies out there that are very, very expensive because they're targeted at people that don't necessarily drink whiskey or drink a lot of it, but it's more about the packaging and the story behind it. No names mentioned, but it starts with H and rhymes with vague, vague pub, should we call it, um, where it's more about the packaging and hey, this is something slightly different. And I think actually Edu could probably get away with that. They could make it very fancy packaging, they could put another 15 quid on the price and they could market it to a premium um, market a pre premium audience where they're less bothered about really what it tastes like but there's nothing in it that's kind of harsh or peaty or anything like that so you drink it and go oh actually that's really very good mm, yes no i like that and the bottle's very fancy and i paid a lot of money for it so it must be really good i think cynical i know but business head I think they'd get away with that, I really do. I think they'd get craft distillery from Brittany, it's a buckwheat whiskey, and it's 50, 60, 75 quid a bottle because it's in fancy packaging. And it's drinkable, so people would think it's actually a lot better than it really is. Very, very interesting. Barry, thank you for that. Um, so, Edu, if you're watching, there you go. There's a little market ploy for you, and if you do decide to do that, I'll take a uh, couple of profits. Thanks very much, cheers. Right, that's me done. I've got one more French to do. It was all right. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.